well. I asked you before, you mentioned it, but Blair, how were you watching yourself back? I find it a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite weird. It's like Finn said, you see yourself on interviews and like playing rugby, but never me like having a cuppa looking at pictures of me naked with my mum <laughs> when I'm a kid. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know what's actually made the cut, so I'm a little Edit bit. The album I'm, a, mom, I'm a little bit scared. Just to confirm, it was. Are you going to have to watch a child? Are you going to have to? <laughs> you and Rory have different leadership styles. What does that look like to you? Give us a bit of an insight as to how your captaincies, co-captaincies, is going to look. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure yet, to be honest. Um, that's only only been the first day today. Um, so I think Did I it was. Go well? <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on your first. Day. Welcome to the official Scottish Rugby Podcast with Caroline Blair and Chris Patterson. It is gearing up towards the Guinness Six Nations and to have a wee chat about that and preview all things Netflix as well. We're now joined by Finn Russell and Blair Kinghorn. Good to see you chaps. Now, since we... <laughs> <laughs> You're giggling already. So that's it, we're off to, <laughs> we're off to start. Um, since we last saw you, been a bit of a busy old spell. So Finn, you've left France. Blair, you've arrived in France. Blair, you're getting married. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Finn, I saw Emma saying that congratulations to you. Number two is on the way as yeah, well. Yeah, another one due in uh, July. So. Bit of a busy old time. Plus, yeah. you've also the front and centre of a documentary on a global sl- streaming platform. So how's, <laughs> how's life been? Uh, you're going to be front and centre. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit busy, but kind of normal, I suppose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's been good. Um could have a few different things to take my mind off uh, of the World Cup straight away after that, obviously. But um, you know, being down in Bath, good, enjoying it there, and exciting summer to look forward to. Um, with Emma being pregnant as well, so that'll be that'll be good. Busy but good. Seems like you've been in Bath for a long time already, and it is only what, three months, four months really. But it seems like th- well, the, the transition's been seamless. But hit the ground running, played immediately the week after the, the Island game. Does it seem like a while? Yeah, Cam said that. He said it feels like I've I've been there for ages. Yeah. Um, maybe because I was up and down throughout the summer, getting the house sorted. Um, and I stayed at Cam's a few times actually, so he probably feels like I've been there longer. Um, <laughs> Just because he stayed. Ah, <laughs> well, Charlie's actually sick all over the spare bedroom as well, oh, no. <laughs> so that didn't help. But his um, third season with United. I know. Like, I'm done. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's only been three months. Um, mm-hmm. But I kind of chatted to Yuan and and Lee Blackett in the summer there. Um, and most rugby teams, it's pretty similar, like yeah. the the system that you run and fitting in here is obviously a lot easier than it was to, to France with the language. So I was able to get on the, the same page with the boys and the the coaches straight away. So that, that's been helpful. It's been, oh, you'll come on to yourself as well, Blair, in a minute, <laughs> but it's what's been quite interesting with you as well is the re- resurgence around Bath, what that's done, and to, even from a marketing perspective. I've got a bit of bone to pick with you for my son's Christmas. I had to buy him a the Bath, bath shirt. shirt. I'm no word of a lie. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where you're, had you anticipated that as well? I'm pretty sure the club's cop a hoop. Yeah, um, I obviously didn't know what it was like before. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lovely city to live in, but it seems like there's a, a nice kind of vibe around it now. Um, like I, said, I don't know what it was like before, but it seems like a nice vibe because we're playing some g- good rugby. We're getting the, the, well, quite often getting the results that we want. Um, <laughs> oh, not every loaded. weekend. But <laughs> oh, that was loaded. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think that helps a lot in a rugby town. It, it makes yeah. a big difference, you know. Um, and it's, you know, boys are a great group of boys as well, so that's that's good. Um, and I think it's just a, an enjoyable well, period at the club just now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The boys seem like they're enjoying it, and it's great to hear that yeah, <laughs> your sons want a top. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Finn said how hard it was to go to France. Is that something you've experienced? They moved to, do obviously only been there, what, months, six, six weeks? weeks, I think it's now. Um, mm. Yeah, it's it's challenging in terms of the language barrier, obviously. Uh, more for the kind of banter <laughs> with your teammates. Um, <laughs> the rugby side of things, like Finn said, a lot of clubs are fairly similar, and I've 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 I've, uh, I've played rugby for long enough to kind you understand how meetings kind of work and certain things. But um, we've got a few uh, lads who speak really good English, so they translate to me in, in meetings, and it's really helpful. Well, it's a rugby language, isn't it? Like yeah. in terms of a a play or a sequence or a call, no matter what name it's given, it could be in any language, you learn the sequence, you learn yeah. the play. I assume it's off-field it's more difficult in terms of yeah, phoning, <laughs> phoning post offices or yeah. deliveries. Or the, ad, the admin <laughs> stuff over there is crazy at the moment. Um, but luckily I've, there's, they've got a good team over there who have helped me settle in, settle in really nicely. 
Do you feel that you've got a voice as well in the, in the squad already in terms of what your thoughts are and how you want to push things as well? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, not so far. Um, I just kind of, I do what I'm told at the moment and just try and perform to my best ability and yeah, it's kind of just not go with the flow but... Bed in. Yeah, kind of like set, try and settle in. It was kind of good arriving so quickly and then just being thrust straight into a game. Um, didn't well, really have half, it. Yeah. I mean, that was like you'd barely got. I'd been. I, I'd done the, like, one full day of training, and then it was just kind of straight in. So it was kind of nice to kind of get chucked in at the deep end. Um, could kind of use it as like an excuse if you're like in the wrong position or if you were doing something <laughs> wrong. Whereas now, like I fully know the system. Mm -hmm. There's. I've got no excuses now if I'm in the wrong place or or like call the wrong thing. So. Yeah, that was kind of start. I was quite good at the start. Uh, <laughs> on that point, though, I mean, I've got this kind of romantic vision, really, of French rugby being less structured in some ways than maybe some of the rugby been exposed to before. Is that the case? Like, is it is it a little bit more flair based? Obviously, some massive humans up front can mm -hmm. give you go forward possession, but it does look as if the the kind of the natural gameplay just falls into place. Would you say it's less structured than Toulouse, or yeah, is I'd it more? Yeah, I'd say it's less structured than probably the rugby we play back in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I think we do have structure, and it may look like chaos on the pitch at but some you know point, but boys seem to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have certain calls for certain things, and then people just use their X Factor. We've got mm -hmm. a lot of good X Factor players in the team who can create something out of nothing, and it does look chaotic, but the boys know each other so well, they react they react so well to each other it kind of it works and they and we practice it all the time at training um but it does look like chaos sometimes so it's training a wee bit organized different chaos. <laughs> organized chaos game. kind of yeah. game based stuff reactionary stuff yeah fun. we do a lot a lot of 15 on 15 oh, yeah. um not not full contact though. not full contact nah never do you never at all or do you do so, this, so far days? since i've been there we've never done full contact like it's just been kind of grab shoulders on because the the repeatability of games in the top 14 is week yeah. after week after week. It's a massive season. Um, you don't really want to get injured in training. Is what I've got from it so far, but I've only been there for six weeks, so I don't really have a clue. I don't know what Friends it was like at Racing, whether you guys did any bone-on-bone -bone stuff. Um, did a little bit. A lot more of it's kind of like you said, it's that sort of shoulders on in yeah. training. Um, and because the season is so long there, there's, what, 26 league games, I think, mm -hmm. which is a lot more than the URC or the, the Premiership, so... Be able to maintain the same level of, of training and in the game just is, is the most important thing. So you probably get a lot of sort of fitness and contact in, in the games. If you play thirty games a year, you're probably not having to do any extra any, well, any extra contact throughout the week. That again then leads into the the Scotland connection there too. So you've both played in Scotland. You're now both exiles as well. How do you find jumping back into the Scotland camp? The the pace of your schedules adjusting you're more used to it now of course Finn this is quite a few years now for you but what are you finding in terms of that does it is it a challenge that you you, you don't mind doing what does that challenge look like um I think it's different when you're in France because now in the premiership there's no games throughout the the competition um so those weeks off throughout the, the, the six nations will actually be weekends off um which would be quite nice for me. I've not had that for, for five years now. Um, <laughs> and I think the travelling back and forward on those weeks off, it does kind of take a little bit of a toll. Um, I know you're younger than me, but <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. But also, Blue going to Toulouse, you'll have to stop over in London, Paris, or, or somewhere like that and have two flights. So that's again different to me. I was lucky in Paris that it'd be a direct flight straight there. Mm. Um, no direct flights is a bit niggly. Not but until summer they don't yeah. come in. This is a cheery story for you. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> I th I think part, part, part you're selling it. Yeah. Love it. I, th I think you know. Well, for me anyway, you know that's going to be the, the situation. Yeah. So you kind of you're prepared for that, and you know it's going to be be a bit back and forward. But you do you do get used to it. Um, and it's I think it's worth it to go and, and live over in France and play in France. I love my time there. Um, so I think it's it's worth it, and it's just part of the it's part of it when you when you sign over there. Still excitement about joining up in the camp, though, isn't it? The national camp comes through, the, the email comes in, the squad gets announced. There's still excitement to, to come <laughs> If I knew the session was going to be like it was today, there wouldn't, <laughs> there wouldn't have been much excitement there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to be uh, what managed today, because we, me, Blair, and um, Cam and Josh played on Sunday, and Aaron played Sunday yeah. as well, so Aaron played Sunday. So I thought we'd have been kind of managed today. Straight Blair, back in. Blair decides to pull out with his, what, your hammy or something. Uh, just, uh, just, you know, One of these looking after injuries. The <laughs> <laughs> looking after the boys. So it was, uh, ended up being quite a big day, but no, nah, it's, it's always good fun getting back yeah. into camp with the boys. It's um, good to see the boys. Meeting yeah. up again. Who was the first person you run towards after being away for six weeks, Blair? 
everyone to be honest <laughs> everyone <laughs> would have been hey still but sadly <laughs> he's, yeah. sadly he's got injured again which yeah. is a real shame it would have been great to see him back mm. in camp he's oh you two have been thick as thieves for years as well i know like, it's, it's a, been yeah. ages since i've seen him and i was really looking forward to seeing it and he was buzzing to be back in in and around the squad after having a real tough time so it's just a shame that it's happened again but you'll be back stronger you finn you've obviously been named co-captain as well you've said it already uh, to scottish rugby you and Rory have different leadership styles. What does that look like to you? Give us a bit of an insight as to how your captaincy, co-captaincy is going to look. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure yet, to be honest. Um, that's only only been the first day today. Um, so I think Did I it was... Go well? <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on your first day. Thank you. Um, you, just, you just told us he trained too long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> bit of feedback there to Gregor. So. Um, no, I think as, as I tell you, you, you talk quite a lot yeah. throughout the... The, the training sessions um, and in the meetings, so that doesn't really change too much. Um, and this week's more about just getting everyone back into the same page, getting to know the new boys in the team, getting back to that, the, the sort of different language of the call sheet that we've got here. Um, so it's more just getting everyone up to speed, getting everyone on the same page and make sure the energy's there, um, which it was actually today, it was actually a really good session. So again, just being able to back that up tomorrow and then us, the ex we'll go back, back home to, to our clubs and then come back in next week. So When did um, they tell you? on Saturday night and just me and Darge are going to be co-captains for, for the campaign so um, which is also brilliant news but I was still trying to get ready for the, <laughs> the game the next day so um, I was quite relaxed and said like thank you very much obviously and, but then I was kind of in the team hotel getting ready for, for the game so I was kind of straight on to the next thing It's but rugby isn't it? Mm -hmm. Bit distracted again. Oh, this is coming <laughs> out now. <laughs> it was a brilliant. Still a bit raw. We spoke about this earlier. It was a brilliant bit in the second half. Where you lads just kept the ball back. Oh. Each other. I thought it was going to go other. the way of the like that the, the Gloucester game actually, but it was. I oh, just kicked out. Got yeah, so <laughs> yeah, he cracked first. I got him. <laughs> I, they were speaking to me on my inside. Uh, Tom and Ramos was speaking to me, and I have no idea what he was saying. <laughs> and then I just kind of, if you actually watch the footage back, I like kind of mark it and then hesitantly like walk a bit and do, then yeah. mark it but again. Yeah. <laughs> and then it cuts to you giggling. <laughs> I was laughing because I knew it was Blair back there, and I was thinking, like, what, the two Scottish guys just going back and forward to each other in like a, a standoff. And then, like I say, Blair cracked first, so it was fine. Oh, this is brutal. I hope it's right. Eh? Takes the small wins when he can get them. Eh? <laughs> in terms of, I mean, l when we talk, one of the things that we said about the year that you've, you've both had, Netflix coming through as well you both play a prominent role in that what was that experience like Finn we'll start with you especially with this first episode we had we've seen with your family in Paris as well it's surely quite surreal uh, yeah it was quite weird watching like myself back on the screen uh, obviously you see maybe interviews and stuff that you mm. you've done after games but not in a you know a series like a filming kind of not in your house yeah <laughs> so that was that was very different um I was pretty relaxed with it all um they're not kind of getting in the way of the cameras and um, my family are pretty relaxed around it and I think it'll be good for the sport, to be honest. Um, you'll see what we get up to a little bit day to day outside of rugby and then you'll actually see how we how we can interact with each other on the pitch and, and, and how that kind of goes and how we sort of tick what we have to do to, to prepare for a game coming up at the weekend. And I don't know about the rest of the episodes, but you might be able to see some of the, the pressures that come in throughout the competition and um, some of the highs, some of the lows. Um, and how us as, a, as an individual take that and as, as a team how we try and keep going throughout the competition so I think it'll be a good insight to the viewers who potentially don't really understand the competition or don't understand rugby it'll give them an insight into to how it is and also from watching other documentaries like The Drive to Survive or I think Breakpoint's another one and mm -hmm. Full Swing is mm -hmm. it called for anything? Um, after watching them you feel like you, you kind of know the players or the drivers themselves so you have a bit more added interest to actually watch the the sport that's on so um i'd like to think it'll be the same with rugby when they get to to know us and get to or feel that they know us on a personal note that they'll then have that interest watching watching scotland play or whichever team it is or whoever they think the <laughs> is the funniest or the best or whoever they, they like the most they'll have a, a bit of an added interest to watch the that team did you have to think about that though from you as a family and your own personal side because <coughs> it's incredibly generous of you on a lot of levels to help grow the game in this way by opening the doors to your your personal life and in such an intimate way um no nah, not really i thought um you know the more access they can get the better a show they're going to be able to to make and then that was going to be the best thing for rugby um and you know we're here obviously playing to win 
but also it's to try and grow the sport and give give young kids that inspiration to come through. So the more people we can get in, involved in the sport and get watching it, the better it's going to be for for well for however long we keep playing for, and then also for young kids coming through, it'll make a better sport and a better a better viewing platform for everyone. It gives you a back catalogue of stuff to keep as well. Yeah, that's true. You know, true. Th- in mm. terms of, I think when you finish playing, and you look back, there'll be some things you remember really vividly and really strongly there'll be other things you completely forgotten about so have some documented to our season and, and individual moments of that with your family I think we were pretty good as well I well, asked you before you mentioned it but Blair how were you watching yourself back I find it a bit strange <laughs> <laughs> it's quite <laughs> weird it's like Finn said you see yourself on interviews and like playing rugby but mm. never me like having a cuppa looking at pictures of me naked with my mum <laughs> when I'm a kid <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know what's actually made the cut, so I'm a little Edit bit. The album, I'm, a, mom, I'm a little bit scared. Just to confirm, it was. Are you going to have to watch it? Child. Are you going to have to? <laughs> <laughs> are you going to have to watch it on your own, or could you watch it in front of other people? I'm not sure yet. Finn, I watched it with Emma um, <laughs> about a week, a week and a half, ten days ago, yeah. and then you're kind of looking, thinking, "Oh, did I actually say that? <laughs> or did that actually happen?" And and then when I went to the premiere, it was then shown in front of, I don't know, 150, yeah. 200 people. And at that point, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you didn't but, have the uh, baby album out with uh-huh. you, though, did you? No, no. Just um, <laughs> Charlie made it in it, so I think that's something she might, yeah, might get to boast cool. about a little bit when she's 15 years old or whatever, since she's in a Netflix yeah. uh, show. It's that such a cool, unique yeah. experience, though, isn't it? Like, it's such an incredible thing to do. Another question that, a bit more serious. Will you use it to see how the opposition view and approach games that you're in I, I don't think so I mean, from, no. from what I saw in the episode it's um, there's not too much in the tactics and the, uh, uh, the you know the actual planning for the game it's more how we can operate uh-huh, it's more individual more how we operate as a team it's uh, not going into the playbook or well for the episode I saw anyway, it's uh, not where we're targeting yeah. especially so yeah. um, as teams I think Scotland are pretty open yeah. um, throughout the whole the whole tournament with the Netflix guys um, but watching that episode, which is heavily on Scotland and England, Scotland yeah. Wales, it doesn't really give anything away that you'd think, oh, this was their tactics that year. Yeah. But also year to year, it, everything changes so much, you know. Yeah. Um, Did you enjoy any of the other ones? You mentioned Full Swing, Drive to Survive. They're, like, they've Obviously, there's quite a few sporting documentaries out there. Netflix do do them really, really well. Mm-hmm. Full Swing, for example, it was interesting because, like you say, it's, they're, they're following the personalities, aren't they? They're helping grow the game by following the personalities. Did you get a real feel for that? watching those documentaries as well have you had chance to I, I really liked watching The Drive to Survive I never mm. watched F1 before and after seeing so that you kind of feel like you understood it a little bit more what the, the sort of the tactics were almost um, within the team um, but I think it's very different with full swing and break point because that's very individual sports obviously mm. yeah. um, whereas rugby is a team sport but they've obviously picked some characters within it but it's a team sport so I think well I'd imagine the producers will learn a lot from this first <coughs> this first um, season and how they can get it better for the next one, um, because it's their first time working in mm. in a team sport. And I know F one's a team, but it's very much just the drivers that they mm. were they were focusing on, obviously. Um, but that's why I kind of mentioned earlier about having that added interest, because it felt like you you understood a little bit more about the tactics that were going on with F one or what actually happened. You know, before it's something that my dad might have watched, and mm. I was thinking, why does he watch this? But it's a story. It's just it's like yeah. an hour and a half race. But then <laughs> when you watch that, you then start thinking, oh, it's actually quite good. You feel yeah. like you can get into it because you under or you think you understand it a lot more. So I think for the Six Nations, a lot of people probably find rugby quite hard to understand. But if they watch this and figure out a little bit more what goes on, what the, maybe not the rules are, but what the what everyone's trying to achieve in this tournament and what I could say the highs, the lows, ups and downs are, they'll get more into it. I think also if people see what you put yourselves through, yeah, like, and the family, it's clear to see physically what you put through <coughs> on the, the eighty minutes you play. But then seeing physically what you put yourself through in recovery, in terms of preparation, but just emotionally as well, and the, the intensity and the scrutiny, like it is. I think they'll be they're looking for sympathy for these <laughs> players, I'll but take, I think there will be. I, well, I'll take it, yeah. take it, but I think there'll be a, it'll be an eye opener for a lot of people to say actually, the level of commitment and the level of any performance these guys contribute to playing for the country is just off the charts and I think it's great for, for people to understand that I think you're that's a, on that point I think you're both really good examples of where you have had media scrutiny at different points you've both been in the headlines you've had you know everybody's yeah, that's in the show as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a great sell ahead uh, you've both had like that experience too in terms of you I mean you signed up to play in rugby didn't you this is your job and I know it's a part of the job 
but what is that side of it like for you? I guess give us a bit of a teaser into what we can expect to see in that episode in terms of what you disclose and how you how you feel about that side of things. Um, my side of things is more just about like the kind of criticism that we kind of get, like. For I think me and Finn are fairly similar. Like I don't really get too bothered by criticism. I think it's just it's part and parcel of the job. Nothing's like that brutal that they're saying. It's kind of like water off a duck's back. I still get mm. certain things nowadays. I did a podcast the other week, and then people are still commented on it because, <laughs> like, oh, still crying after you got beat off Ireland in the World Cup. I'm like, oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's I find it part and parcel. I don't find it bothers me too much, and that's kind of the thing that I speak about. I think in my bit, but who knows if it's in it? I haven't seen it. <laughs> Um, you were shown us it earlier, you definitely watched it. I've watched little clips of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm too, too scared, <laughs> I'm too scared. Like, I, the first thing I've seen was my mum asking me a question. I'm like, off, turn it off. <laughs> Can't deal with How that. was your mum with it? Yeah, she was fine. She's she, fine? Yeah. Did she, she quite enjoy it or? Well, yeah. I think she enjoyed it, to be honest. Like, it's going to, I think she's, she was a bit nervous. Because it's strange. Yeah, like, it's, really strange. It's, it's not relatable as well. It's not no, something it's that like, you can act, just, you act, know. Act normal act normal without yeah. pretending the cameras are here yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like I don't really I'm a bit weird I don't really want to do that <laughs> did you I enjoy the experience yeah I thought it was cool thought yeah, it was, it was really definitely cool. It was cool to do it um, but you say it is like you're trying to act normal yeah. and it's not like when the cameras are training you're just yeah. training and mm. speaking as normal or whatever it's you're kind of asking questions around the competition coming up and you're you know, obviously you're getting the most out of it for for helping offer the show you know mm. Um but I think that's part of it, and I think that was probably a bit of a weird bit, wasn't it? When you're, oh, it's just something that we're not used to. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm used to people filming us when we're doing stuff like this, mm. or out in the pitch. But eh, I think yeah, it's it's cool, and hopefully it's hopefully it's really good. Well, speaking of tournaments coming up, then let's give a quick wrap around in terms of the Guinness Six Nations. First up, Wales. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about that game? I think, I think pretty good. We've obviously not won down there. Twenty two years. In twenty two years, so there you go. Um, <laughs> I think it's something that we need to. It's a place that we need to go and win. And I think if we win away from home, someone we've not won in 22 years, it's a good kickstart to the campaign. It could really start some momentum. So I feel like it's going to be an exciting opportunity. Obviously, we performed really well when we played Wales in the last Six Nations, but they'll obviously be a new, new different team. Um, so it's going to be a good challenge. But it's a great place to go play rugby. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the the squad they've picked is very different to, to last year, so yeah. it's kind of hard to predict how they'll play, what you know, what their strategy will be. So um, I think you know today we didn't really mention Wales at all. We're just focusing on us to get everyone, like I said, up to speed and and on the same page. Tomorrow will be similar, and then come next week we'll be be more focused on Wales. But like I said, with a, such a, a new team, it will be hard to predict how, how they're going to play. So I think for us, it's more just focusing on us getting our job right and and us getting getting the energy and get everything, getting ready for that game. Um, obviously, a lot of the boys in the URC will play against the Welsh boys, but um, like I say, it's too hard to predict how they're going to play. Under Gatlin as well, he came in last year. Yeah. Bef mm. you know, before Gatlin was very much kicking and set piece or kicking, catch mm. ball, kick again. And then who the next coach came in, um, Wim Pivak. Wim Pivak, and then he was very open and expansive playing it. So I think last year they're kind of caught between the two, so I'm not sure what they're going to try and do this year. Um, but yeah, I think like like Blair said, if we can get off to a win down there, um, that will start us off obviously really well in the tournament. But um, it's not obviously an easy place to go as we've not won there in quite a while. It's it's often the same. Like the opening weekend of the Six Nations, there's always change going into the Six Nations. Mm. There's always a fresh start, a new start, new focuses. More so even after a, a Rugby World Cup year, if you think, I think we'll be probably the most consistent in terms of personnel on field and off field. A few changes, obviously. Um, across other nations and senior players the coaches backroom staff a lot of ch change over turnover so it makes this opening weekend even more of an unknown I think Finn's exactly right you have to focus on yourself and get get your understanding right your game right what you maybe don't know in terms of what Wales will bring in, in terms of strategy or, or structure you know what they'll bring in terms of intensity and emotion and physicality mm. um, but there's, it's a young squad um, that'll be some of them exposed to Six Nations rugby for the first time so um, they'll be excited, it'll be a big challenge, but hopefully get off to a, a good start. You'll both be up for the France game as well, <laughs> needless to say, relishing that opportunity at Scottish Gas Murrayfield. Yeah, it'll be cool. <laughs> 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 it will be cool. It's always good to get get a game at home. Packed out Scottish Gas, Enfield. 
um, in front of the in front of the home fans. Have any of the your new French team mentioned it yet? Did they talk about Scottish Gas Murrayfield? They say they love they, they love, love it, coming to play there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boys love coming to play there. Um, say it's a great atmosphere. The uh, anthem. They love the, the anthem. anthem. Yeah, yeah, they love the anthem. Uh, I love the anthem. Um, <laughs> but no, it'll be quite cool to play to play yeah. to play against some people that I've got to know a little bit better. Um, you swap a shot with one of your teammates like yeah. Fred did with Karen but you had to give him a hand on last year, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I yes, I forgot He's about that. He's a little bit bigger than me. <laughs> I forgot about that. And and just just on that, because obviously a lot of fans um, won't manage to go to Scottish Gas Minifield because tickets are in high demand. So mm. um, on that, that experience for you, Scottish Gas Minifield, what's it like? And, and rounding off with that. What's the experience? It? Yeah, from you, for like, what does um, it feel like for you, for, for Finn Russell, for Blair Kinghorn? What's it like for you? From, from, a, from the heart. I think when it, when it comes to Six Nations games, especially with teams well, like France and England this year, um, I think it's, it's a, one of the best experiences kind of in the world. It's hard to kind of put it into words. Um, like you know what it's like, Mossy, mm-hmm. obviously, but it's hard to kind of put it into words um, because if you, you know, I say it's a brilliant, you get so excited, you get whatever it is, it doesn't really quite create and it's hard to then imagine what it's actually like. You know, when you step off that bus and you've got however many thousands of fans standing there cheering you on just for getting off the bus. Um, and then when you come into the stadium and then the anthems, like we sort of spoken about, the, the you know, Thor of Scotland going and having your family in the crowd, your friends. And it's just, it's, a, it's an experience that's hard to, to actually put into words, I would say. Um, and it's something until you actually do it, you probably won't understand it, even if we do try and explain it to you. Um, but I think it, it's no, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, and it's something that you, you never, you never get bored of, do you? I think um, maybe that's why people who retire say that you always enjoy it. You never know when your last game is, because it's a feeling that you'll probably never be able to get back. Um, you'll know what it feels like, but you'll never have that feeling again. Um, which is, I don't know, for me probably sooner <laughs> than you. But <laughs> who knows? <laughs> that was really good, Finn. <laughs> Put that into words that right. was good. That yeah, was no. beautifully done. I think, yeah, I think really that squares away. No. Uh, Finn Russell, Blair Kinghorn, always a pleasure. Never a chore speaking to you two. Thank you very much indeed, and very best wishes for the Guinness Six Nations ahead.